Welcome to Femflux Friday. We are here on Olympia TV. Make sure that you subscribe. Make sure you like our video. I'm here with my beautiful co-hosts. We have Camille Perriott, Whitney Jones, Linda Murray, and myself, Wendy Fortino. Um, sitting on our panel here, we have two super moms who are mm -hmm. top of their game in the fitness industry. And we're... I would, we're sitting here with a collection of how many, how many decades of experience now in the bodybuilding world, ladies? Gosh, combined. Mm. Uh, combined mm. a, a lot, a okay? Lot. Mm. We've, collectively, we've, we've been operating at the top of our game in the sport of bodybuilding, and if there's a challenge to be faced, we've probably faced it. Mm -hmm. But beyond us, we're convinced that you are probably thinking right now about challenges that you have personally faced as an athlete, too. From emotional mm -hmm. pain, to family mm -hmm. strain, to overcoming injury, to feeling lost and defeated, we're going to dive into all of it. We're also going to put pull Camille and Whitney's kiddos into our convo to see what it's like inside the home of a top female bodybuilder. You're going to get the chance to hear firsthand how kids can absolutely be involved in a positive way with moms who are dedicated to this sport and to their family. Uh, make sure again that you like and subscribe, comment on this video, and share with us all of your experiences. So, without further ado, ladies, let's um, we're gonna we're gonna open up a little bit before we kind of dive into the mom side of things. Let's just all start to share some of the challenges that we have faced. So, I have a list of some mm -hmm. some different things that some of you may have faced, but um, but let's go ahead and start uh, with you, Camille. Go <coughs> ahead and and just be open and real through your bodybuilding journey. What are some, just right off the top of your head, some things that you've you've dealt with? I think the biggest uh, struggle that I've encountered was uh, social isolation. So yeah. the dieting, the training, that was all fun, and I didn't it didn't affect my lifestyle too much. But yeah. so, social isolation definitely was something that I struggled with. I feel yeah. like I there was a lot of relationships that I didn't really nourish during that mm -hmm. time. And I when yeah. I came out of uh, my competing career, it was kind of like who's here and I'm sure also there was effects at home of having a mom that competed for 10 years you know there mm -hmm. so I would say that was yeah. like probably the, one of the biggest struggles yeah mm. yeah gosh for me I'd say uh time commitment yeah just um being a multiple business owner a single mom two crazy busy boys yeah and then with fitness our division you do your cardio you do your weight training you do your mm. meal prep and then yeah. you have hours of routine practice so I have to be very organized and scheduled and open to the day just going completely sideways yeah. and knowing that flexible. I missed mm -hmm. my four hours of training for my routine for yeah. the week or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. That was hard. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, as everyone knows, the injuries <laughs> and the recovery. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Um, but yeah. again, I think with that being a mom, especially yeah. kind of relating this to family, how you structure your schedule, yeah. how you prioritize what's important, yeah. how you deal with setbacks. Those were all teaching moments yeah. to anyone that's close to you in your household or to yeah. friends. So it's like, you know, as an athlete, we do. We have an opportunity to really educate and, and give others some motivation and some inspiration to say, hey, when, when stuff gets hard, you push back harder. Yeah. And being a mom, that's one of the greatest things that I've seen with my kids yeah. as all these challenges that we face as athletes, those are just real life things. We're talking about it in our sport, yeah. but it helps shape who you are as a person. It helps shape your character and it makes you stronger. Yeah. Whether you're a child, a woman who's facing challenges in their 50s, someone yeah. in their 30s struggling with life, no yeah. matter what, you gotta figure out how to balance it and then push back mm. harder. You are mm. like the one to hear from on that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For me, the challenge of transformation. Yeah. That was very mm. difficult. Yeah. Uh, I can uh, transformation to get ready for a physique, show or after not the way my anymore. body the, the way my body yep. changed. Yeah. yeah. What you mean my getting body, into it or out of it? Like or both. like like seeing my body change. Well, because you were Being competing so when muscular. it wasn't really socially accepted yet. Yes. Yeah. And so yeah. that was that was mm. yeah. a serious struggle for me. Yeah. Every single Olympia 
because like in the beginning, I mean, I was pretty happy with my weight and the way I looked. Right, but you as a as a female bodybuilder mm -hmm. with with figure yeah. everything that we go through, you have to. I watched my face change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I had to, in part, as far as dealing with like friends and family. Yeah, it was challenging yeah. for them because they didn't really understand what I was doing, especially because it wasn't there's was no social yeah. media. Yeah, yeah, and then they're looking at me thinking, <clears throat> "Eat a sandwich." You look great and... in the beginning. Yeah. like you yeah. look great. You're in great shape. You, you know, what are you doing? Are you lean enough? And yeah. You know, so every single Olympia, um, especially like four weeks out, because you had to, I had to go to the extreme. Yep. And you want to tell yourself, I want to eat, right? Yeah. And I was eating, but I want to. That was it. Was just challenging. Yeah. To mm. let go, and to take my body there yeah. to yeah. that place. And, that, I wasn't and it really, wasn't as it wasn't as socially acceptable. No, and right, so you're right, you're right. really fighting against the grain. I was fighting yeah. against it and, yeah. and and a lot of it was, you know, like covering up in the gym. Yeah. It was, you know, with my family kind of hiding um, certain things because my mom, she was like, Why are you Didn't understand eating it. like yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, you're looking older, you're not looking, you don't look happy, yeah. and, you know. Um, so that last four weeks, I yeah. mean, it was super challenging. And I wanted to believe, like, this is enough. Like, why isn't this enough? Right. Yeah. You know, do I have to, like, yeah. have that type of separation in my quads and you're waiting for it to happen? And, yeah. Um, I, yeah, it was Maybe just you didn't, very challenging. The, the, the weight of, of being such a pioneer probably didn't hit you, but it's probably hitting you after the fact now, mm. right? Oh, yeah. I mean, you are, you are one of the women who paved the way for the rest yeah. of us. Mm -hmm. It's probably so powerful for you to think about that now, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? Yeah. Because you're at the time. It was time, worth it. We don't, yeah, I don't think that that's all that matters, I get to right? Eat now it's, it's worth it. You get to have the well, glory. It's interesting because what you just described is usually what most athletes yeah. are waiting yeah. for and like mm -hmm. trying. To, trying to achieve quickly, mm -hmm. yeah. and you were at a point fighting. where it's like you were fighting, and yeah. you're like, "Ah, oh, this is mm -hmm. enough. This is yeah. enough." Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and I had to, I had to isolate. And also not show, I think, my physique because yeah, you covered your I arms knew, a lot. You said I recognize, yeah, and that's why you notice yeah. a lot of times I wear things where I'm covering You're used my to arms. Do yeah, I'm trying to still. Yeah, that's, that's exactly where that you know, where that all. We're comes showing from. our arms off. We're like we work yeah. hard for these bad boys. Just so much, that's why you know? Linda needs to show them off. We, she has the best arms. She's got amazing arms of yes. all of us. Still, <laughs> yeah, okay. Still. I'll rece <laughs> I receive it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> receiving, receiving. I, I'm similar to you. Actually, I was I was muscular. My whole life when I was in elementary school I got you know I don't want to say I necessarily got teased for it but I was really self-conscious about it it was like I wanted you know I didn't want to be stronger than the boys I mm -hmm. was like you know I could beat boys at arm wrestling it was like not I want to be curly girl I was yeah. like you know I, yes. I was so athletic but and a tomboy but I was also wanted to be like feminine and a girly girl and so I fought that a lot growing up but then I entered this sport where I started putting muscle on and I was really self-conscious about it I it wasn't to, it was 2008 when I started competing so it wasn't like it wasn't totally socially accepted yet. Mm -hmm. It was still kind of weird to see a woman with like a lot of muscle walking around in 2008, um, even though it was more accepted. Mm -hmm. And I fought that a lot, you know? It's funny because I've mentally have overcome so much to get to where I really don't care anymore. Yeah. I know yeah. people are gonna judge me. I know mm -hmm. people are gonna have an opinion about me. And the mental mm -hmm. growth that I feel like I've, I've had over the years of dealing with this and, and, and deciding to just stick to what I wanna do, mm -hmm. it, when you stick to something, it's crazy how you you grow as a person so much. Like you're forcing that mental growth and that mental shift, and the the idea that you're being who you want to be and not what other people think you should be. Mm -hmm. That's what the sport really does the yeah. best, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you know, like believe it or not, I'm sure each of us, like even like bikini, I know there probably the things that you deal with, where you know, but like you're still not eating. Can you just like 
Take oh, a yeah. break. Just have this There's yeah. pressure. People yeah. want yeah. you yeah. to Especially fit family in with, functions. Yeah. They family really functions do. Where mm-hmm. it, put, it put on so much just yeah. like, ah. Yeah, yeah. 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 just take yeah. you right, and they don't get, yeah. 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 We're going to we're gonna focus a little bit on this side of the couch for a few minutes here, okay? <laughs> we don't know what we're in for. I, oh. <laughs> I, I want to, I wanna, before we start our next segment, I just want to, I want to preemptively, I want to ask you ladies, each, each of you, one at a time. We'll start with you, Camille. Um, being a mom, in the sport, you know, all the things, all the mental struggles that we've just were talking about, you know, overcoming, you know, our, our body image issues and like overcoming that and what people think of us and, and dealing with struggle, like defeat, all that kind of stuff. Your kids being there watching you, how does that affect how you go into the challenge, how you react to the challenge? How does that play a part in, in your journey? Well, it's constantly in the back of my mind. Yeah. You know, like I have you, like what Whitney described it perfectly earlier, balancing yeah. everything mm-hmm. out, but also just being as a mom of a daughter yeah. who would look at every single thing I did. I really had to do, almost have, I, I really le- tried her. to get a filter on everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, maybe I am having a certain thought or mm-hmm. I was, you know, maybe talking about my physique in a certain way. Um, or critiquing it, yeah. um, I wanted to make sure that she was hearing a different side or wouldn't wasn't hearing that yeah. because I don't mm-hmm. want my what mm. I'm doing to be totally. influenced on mm. her. She's her own person, and I want her to have a healthy body image. Mm. Totally. Even though I think what we are doing has a very healthy body image, a lot of people mm-hmm. would disagree. Right. Yeah. And and yeah. a lot right. of like and uh, some uh, f- uh, f- friends or maybe family members yeah. would disagree with what I was doing yeah. around a child. Right. Mm-hmm. So. It was a struggle. It was a struggle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like your opinion of yourself is one thing, but people's opinion of you in front of your daughter is also another factor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. What about you, Whitney? Gosh, I'd say for me, um, it's different too because with women or girls and boys, right, I guess, yeah. you know, it's, it is different. Yeah. I'd say for me, one of the biggest things that I... Mm. Life's hard. Yeah. We all know that. Um, I didn't grow up in a cush life. I don't. I want to provide, obviously, for my boys, yeah. but I want them to understand early. You get places in life when you work hard yep. and you don't play the pity party role. Yep. Yeah. You're never the victim. Whatever's going on, you got to focus on the positive. So yeah. I have this mm-hmm. on my mirror in my bathroom, H2G2. You don't have to, you get to. So it does not matter Seriously? what. Seriously? Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> it's like, it's the one thing mm-hmm. I want them to understand. Like, you don't have to go to football practice, but you get to yeah. because you made the team and you have an opportunity to hang around with your friends, do something exciting. You don't have to go to school, but you're yeah. lucky that you get to. Yep. So, But I have to practice that. I have to model it so that they can implement it on their own yeah. without shoving it down their throats. Yeah, and obviously amazing. it's just trying to lead by example yeah. and yeah. hoping. And I guess yeah. I'm sure when we bring them on, um, we'll find out <laughs> if it had an well, impact or not. <laughs> Actually, you know what? That's a great segue because um, we're we're going to take a quick break and you're probably wondering, how do their kids feel about all this? Mm-hmm. Well, you're going to get to find out firsthand because we're going to bring their kids on. We're nervous. <laughs> and we're going to ask them so we can hear firsthand and yeah. Not through the lens of their moms. So don't go anywhere, stay with us, and when we come back, we'll have their kiddos on board. Welcome back to FemFlex Friday. We are here and we're back. And now we have the kids on board. We're going to introduce our beautiful children here. We have Lola, who is uh, Camille's beautiful daughter. <laughs> nice and refreshed after a nice vacation with her mama in Europe. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. We have Brody. Give him a wave. <laughs> and we have Jake. Give him a wave. All right, these are the children of Whitney Jones. <laughs> and we're going we're gonna to ask them some questions, and we want to know um, a little bit more, dive a little deeper into how, how this, this sport has impacted them in, in all sorts of ways. So we're, I have pointed questions for you guys, okay? So Lola, we're going to start with you. Okay, we're gonna start with you. So I would love, we would love to know how how has your mother's success in the fitness industry influenced your own views on health and fitness? 
I think it like it made me realize that like if she wasn't like she wasn't lazy about it. Mm-hmm. So like whenever like she had a, like a specific thing to do for like the show, mm-hmm. or like if she had like workout for like to get like the muscular body physique she wanted to compete, I realized that like if I wanted to stay in shape and if I wanted to do something and achieve something, I should actually like do it instead of just sit ah. around. And I've also ah. realized that um, just like. Mostly, I think I remember when she was doing her shows, she used to, like, have, like, these weird diets where she'd either <laughs> eat a lot of sugar or she'd eat, like, a lot of chicken, which she still does now. But and I just realized that there's, like, different, like, for you to achieve something, you need to actually do it instead of just, like, not doing anything about it. So I think that's what I've learned from my mom throughout her succession and her fitness goals. Oh, that's Aww. awesome. Yeah. Wow, way to go. So mom. just that's, do it. That's just learn. Do it. Just yeah. do it. Get it done. You got to put the work in. I just have a mini follow-up question really quick. <clears throat> How old were you when your mom started competing? Like four or five. Oh, I think, wow. like, I think she, started, she started it when I was like, I think, well, when me and my mom moved into our apartment, she started uh, getting coaching for it when I was like around like four and five. Aww. And then she started actually competing when I was like five. Mm. Aww, that's Cute. awesome. That's <laughs> you made your mama smile. Okay, Brody, this question is for you. Um, can you share a memorable experience or a lesson you've learned from your mother's journey in bodybuilding? Okay. <laughs> so she's always like inspired me to help be a better person Aww. whether it's like athletically or just like a, a all-around good person but she's helped push me to be who i can who i am right now athletically cry. especially oh. she's gotten me she's given me many opportunities to grow like oh. mentally and physically Honestly, um, so it's just taught me to take what I have and like take it to my hand and like do what I can with the yeah. opportunities that present itself. Is there is there like a specific moment that stands out in your mind over the course of your mom competing that you just you just you just is ingrained in your mind? Is something you can't you can never forget? Being when we went up to her show, it was. I was in, it was, I think it was in Las Vegas. I can't remember if it was Las Vegas or Florida. It was, no, it was in Vegas. I was in my crutches and I was able to watch her from actually in the audience, like succeed at what she's been doing her oh, whole entire life. Gosh. I'm gonna cry. So seeing her succeed at what she loves shows that anything is possible. Oh. You guys are going to make me cry, I swear. You're making me, okay. you're make me cry. Okay, Jake, you know, you know you're up next, right? <laughs> okay, so, so tell me, how do you support and encourage your mother's goals and aspirations in the fitness industry? And then also, how does she support and encourage your goals? Well, it is very awesome to have a mom like her because she inspires me to do better in my sports and with my health and she's just she always has my back with with these type things and i could ask her questions and if i'm ever confused with anything she can answer me and help answer them and help me out and and what sports do you do i do football football got it yes (laughs) i need to tell how she did anything else yeah she helps me a lot yeah like you know what guys how does it feel to have a mother that's so athletic mm-hmm. that can flip and fly? Because <laughs> you know, you you guys play football, and I'm sure the other your other uh, teammates, their moms can't fly. And <laughs> like that just seems like so. Incredible. My mom can fly. Can How you does that feel? <laughs> I've, I've been told uh, 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 too many times to count, like, wait, your mom's the buff mom in the stands? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. 
You're probably wow. ready. <laughs> I know. But you guys, I'm sure you like, because you relate. You yes. Got, you have a connection. Because what you're you do is so physical and what yeah. they do. What what positions do you play, Brody? We and both big Jake? defensive end. Ah. Wow. wow. They're big boys. Jeez. Funny story. Jake, I don't know if you remember this. It was your first grade. It was show it or not show and tell. It was like parents like they come uh -huh. in and talk about their job. So Jake brings in. I didn't know. I thought I was talking about being a gym owner. And he gets up and all the little kids. I mean, it was little. He's like, my mom can do a backflip. Go. <laughs> and I was like, not right here. And all the kids are like, yeah, do it. And I was do like, uh, I have like a tiny circle. I'm, I don't think I should do a backflip. Nothing else was exciting about the job. <laughs> they just wanted to see a backflip. Do you remember that, Jay? Did you do it? No. No, no there was literally no. I would, you know me. I would have, but there was no room. <laughs> you guys like to show her off. <laughs> it was so funny. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, that's what my job oh, you was guys, to do a flip. This is awesome. <laughs> this is so good. Oh my gosh. Okay, Lola. Uh -huh. Lola, you're up next. Okay, so how has growing up with a top female bodybuilder as your mother shaped your perception of beauty and body image? Um, okay, so I think like when I was um I don't think it really changed me in any way thinking I, I should be this person or I want to look like this person because my mom made me realize I'm beautiful who I am and I don't need to change that perspective. <laughs> but um, I'd say like maybe like if I ever, I know it's not going to happen, but if I ever like gained weight or if I looked a certain way, I knew that I always rely on my mom to help me get back in shape because um. I think with like all social media i remember like, i think she started getting like really into social media when i was like six seven and eight and nine and so there would just be this perspective of how someone should look on the internet if like they should like be thinner have like a small waist just everything like that and it just kind of like you know like of course like you're gonna edit your photos to look a certain way on instagram or just any social platform mm -hmm. but i kind of realized like i didn't need to do that oh, and good like for i was you. around myself good for you yeah that's huge that's job, great, Lola. Good for job, Lola. Lola. That's <laughs> great job. That's, honestly, that that was that was awesome. Every every girl your age needs to listen to you. Yes, mm -hmm. um, you're an awesome you're an awesome role model, an awesome, awesome example. Mm -hmm. And I hope I hope you show your friends this because that was the perfect answer. Seriously, that was awesome. Don't ever stop thinking that way, okay? Mm -hmm. That's okay. super super great. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking, Lola. Like, so how does it feel? Like, I know my mom did not, like, when I look at Camille, she's stunning. Both Aww. of you are beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. So what does that feel like to be, like, with your mom and shopping and then people go, oh, <laughs> you know, they're trying to That's hit on her mom? or something. It is really I don't bad. know. I like, I never thought really of my mom as sexy. I know, <laughs> I know my mom had to be sexy when she was 35. <laughs> and four, but it was, she's my mom. You and realize that your mom is beautiful. She's beautiful. I mean, it's we, know, we know she's beautiful. But it's, the same for both of you. But Lola, like, how do you explain that one to me? <laughs> it's hard. It's because it's not like, it's mostly because, like, half of my school falls are and like half my school walk up like, dude, your mom's so hot. <laughs> oh my God. Like, how is she that bad? Or like, okay. Or just like, I think, or like invitations, um, will be just like guys be like, like, do you live here? Like, you know, it's just like, I mostly have to like stand by her dealing with just like all that. Like, oh, yeah, I'm here right now. Or, or like, no, I don't know if you're right. Oh, yeah, I'm just coming to visit. So I mostly have to deal with, like, coming up to her and talking to her, either flirting with her. But, I mean, most of the time she has it. But I think it's just, like, it's not hard, but it's just, like, watching, like, people coming up to me saying that, like, oh, she's hot. Or, like, oh, it's just, like, a little bit. Not, it's just, like... 
You know the apple doesn't I fall far from the so tree much. on that one, uh-huh. right? Which is also yeah. why I've really kind of shifted on my yeah. social media, too. Like, okay. I'm really careful because she told me that was happening. I'm just like, ooh. I know. Uh-huh. That's so, weird. Yeah. 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 So, so Jake and Brody, <laughs> with your mom, I mean, because you same, guys are men, right? Same question. And oh, yeah. you're like, that's my mom. Like, I see you looking at her. Oh, yeah. Don't look at her like that. <laughs> so, what's your, how do you guys handle that? I have been told countless times like oh look at your mom oh, she's so hot i have just learned like my comeback is like oh yeah that's where i get the good looks from like, it's just nice. instant you're and I'm, like, I mean, there's, worse, there's worse things to be known by than having a good looking mom Aww. <laughs> you can't live that's well like, that's amazing you guys are you guys are so cool you guys are seriously so cool um okay so Let's see, that, that's, that's, I don't want to take it to a negative thing, but how do you handle any criticism or misconceptions about your mother's profession as a bodybuilder? Brody. I'm like, Brody, you go. like, uh. <laughs> Brody. There's, I mean, the most of the, I don't, there's very little criticism that okay. I hear is, but the, what I do hear is like the, Oh, your mom must be taking steroids, all that kind of mm. stuff. You must be taking steroids. It mm-hmm. gets pushed on me. Mm. And I'm like, no, it's just she works hard. Like you can't just get it like that kind of talent by taking some sort of right. pills or injections, that kind of stuff. It takes time and dedication. Mm. And You've truly, seen it firsthand. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm just like, I mean I I Take it as a compliment. Like, yeah, I mean, I kind of appreciate that you think that I, that so she smart. has to, like, that she looks like like that where she has to be taking that. But like, no, it's truly just hard work, dedication mm. that she has put towards her her skills and her talents and all that kind of stuff. Oh so God, I mean, so like, smart. I don't take it too uh, too close to the heart. I just it just push it off my shoulder, like kind of, that kind of stuff, you know. Well, and it's, I will have to say, it's, he's a big boy. So, Brody, what's mm-hmm. your weight now? Because you're gaining, like, weekly. What's your weight? <laughs> like, 237. And he's, wow. he's almost six two. So, he's a big yeah. kid. But yeah. during wow. the wow. off season, he's trying to put on weight for his first yeah. year. And he's gotten that. And it's so sad that yeah. they think, oh, because of the industry oh. I'm in. So, like, Brody, what are you taking? As if I would even... No, ever do that allow to you. that, want that. Yeah. If anything, I'm trying to say, look, you've got to protect your health. You got to do it yeah. the right way. There's so many right ways to do it. Right, but well, it's sad because of the perception. It's mm. sad, but one unique thing about all three of you is that you're, you know, being in a household with moms that are so successful in something. You learn in life that when you're really successful at something, it threatens people. It'll threaten the energy around you, and people will want to bring you down. They're going to want to find a reason why you're able to succeed and they're not. And you're learning that at an early age, which I think is actually a good mm-hmm. thing because you're going to learn it at some point. The, any, whether it's now or later, you're going to find out that when you're doing good at something, people are going to want to, you know, scratch at your armor. You know what I mean? Um, but we're gonna we're gonna actually kiddos we're going to take a break and we're going to come back for a fun talk show get your papers ready get your whiteboards ready we're going to play a little game so you you guys don't go anywhere come back we're going to have some fun people always ask how i got here i was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else every damn day if i can have hundreds of hours back You know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables. F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. Welcome back to FemFlex Friday. We're gonna play a little game with these beautiful mothers (laughs) and these beautiful children called do you know your mom? <laughs> okay, I just made that up. 
<laughs> okay, so here's how it's gonna go. All right, we have yeah. we have five <laughs> questions. All right, and and each of you are going to um, we're gonna start with the first question. Okay, we're gonna go question by question. Everyone is gonna answer the first question. Okay, after everyone answers the first question, we're going to put your answers up. Okay, and we're gonna compare. If you can't see it in the camera, you're just gonna say what your answer is. And if you match, you get a point. If you don't, you don't get the point. Okay. So that's how the game is going to be played. Are you guys ready? <coughs> so does each question get like one big thing? One, one big thing. Paper. Every right. yeah, every question. Okay. So, so right big, Lola. Right, really big. All right. Okay. So, so question number one. What is the one thing that your mom always forgets or misplaces? Winnie forgets and misplaces everything. She's like I, my oh. brain. No. Oh, oh my god! god. Um, what do I misplace? Uh, it's backwards. So I wrote. Oh, wait, hold it. I will keep it down. Well, yeah, Lola, don't don't look. Don't look. She's got it up. Wait, hang on. I'll tell you okay. when I put the answer up. Okay. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, are you, guys, are you guys ready? I don't even know it. Okay. All right, put your answers up. Brody and Jake, your answers are. Ah. Oh, ah. <laughs> hanger and. Her phone. Charger. Her phone and charger. charger. Yes. And hanger. And Lola, what was yours? Her, her phone. phone. Her phone. Her Where'd phone. You put? Phone. Phone. Ding, put, ding, 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 ding. Okay. I mean, he <laughs> said food. I'm, I'm always eating and then wait, I leave I it and I'm like, where did I put it? Wait, you know what? Whitney's was a little harder because she does, she, I can see her misplacing a lot of things. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Multitasking All right. always. Exactly. Are you guys ready for question number two? Okay. So number two, what is your mother's lucky charm? And it can be a number. If she has a lucky number Ooh. or if she has a lucky charm. From competing or just in life? They pr they don't think they know this. <laughs> oh, actually, okay. Don't put it up yet. Uh, Wait to put it up. I'll tell you when to put it up. All right. <laughs> 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 All right. All right. And okay. Answers. Put your answers up. Brody, Jake, what do you have? You have me. Ah, her what? bracelet. Oh, no. Okay, oh, Lola. Nice. Okay, Whitney, what's your answer? Okay, so I don't think you guys know this, but you've given me like notes, cards, even when, um, this was a lot when you were younger and you uh, couldn't travel the shows. And I bring them with me every time before uh, shows. But you didn't know that. Yeah, I don't think they ever know. I pack it and I. What did they put up? But well, that's a match because he said me. Yeah, and you know what? Oh, the that is a match. That at counts. the shows because I just do Olympia now, and having them there is a total good luck charm. Okay, you know yeah. what? That's a match. I think that we're gonna. And I my bracelet gonna, I just got. We're gonna for Mother's count that. Day. Mm -hmm. So you yep. said me. I think that that's a match. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ding 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 ding. Okay, Lola, what's your answer? I did. Chris and me, but I feel like, oh, I did Chris and me, but I feel like her lucky charm would always be her, like, her number for competing, like, um, like, you know, like, the, yeah. like, little, like, pin thing with the uh -huh. number, I think that would be her lucky thing. Oh, Lola, I can't believe you didn't get this one. What is it? What it is was it? was your rocks. Oh! Your oh my gosh! I slept with those every this. night. Oh. You mentioned that. I've heard about the rocks. Yeah. That. Yeah. But yes, you and Chris are my lucky charms. Now I feel. Oh. Yes. I know. Right? Hello. Yeah, I but the rocks remember. are her rocks, so it's yes. kind of yes. 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 It's, okay. It's kind of a big idea. Okay. Are you guys ready for question number three? Yes. Okay. Come on, Lola. <laughs> All right. <laughs> number three, Jake, Brody, Lola. What was your most memorable childhood memory with your mom? And you guys also. What was your most memorable childhood? What do you think their most memorable childhood memory would be? Mm. Oh my God. <laughs> writing out, writing out a paragraph. Because you know, mm. it might be different, but this is how we learn. We're going to learn more about your children during this. That segment. is so hard. Ooh. <laughs> I don't even know. I'm like. 
Everything. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put something. Are you, are you, do you, it could be you something recent. Catching on what I'm thinking? Hint, hint. Uh-huh, I know. It could hint. be something recent. Hint, hint. hint. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> That's a good one. I'm going to put. That's what I thought. Okay. She's going to tell you what she's going to put so that you can put the okay. same thing. I'm putting, I'm putting <laughs> down. Oh, she's your, like, what is it? She thought I was going to. I can't okay. tell you. Put it down. <laughs> you, okay, so Lola and Camille, if you need some more time, you guys keep thinking. We'll go with Jake and Brody first. So, Jake, what do you have? Christmas morning. Christmas. Aww. Aww. Brody, what do you have? I said holidays, but then her making my cakes, like oh. cakes when I was young, and then and like my thir- 14th birthday. I have a whole story about that. It's awful. Wait, the yeah. cakes, a cake story? Mm-hmm. Oh man, I oh. want to hear this story. I was about 14 years old. We had a, sorry for calling you out, Mom, but this is a funny <laughs> story. <laughs> it's true. There's me a little roasting here, I'm sure. <laughs> See, Lola, we wanted, can we have more time? We wanted to have a birthday party at my uh, our house, so, uh, we had people over, we were swimming, blah, blah, blah. My mom, want, we were making a pineapple upside down cake, which is one of our favorite cakes. And <laughs> she forgot to put it in the oven at a certain time. So she's oh. like, okay, instead of 375, I'm gonna put it at 400, but instead of 15 no, minutes, it's gonna be 12. It's not a big bake of cake. <laughs> well, she pulled it out, it looked amazing. Literally, it looked perfect, okay. like it was crispy burnt on the outside, saying happy birthday. We cut into it, and it just sank. No! It was completely uncooked on the inside. Oh. <laughs> and then I tried to pop it in the microwave and see oh, it. Of course you did. I don't know how to cook. So Whitney likes seared cake. Oh, yes. my God. Did it taste good, though? <laughs> no, I'm it sure was you not even it. Edi- No, it oh. was. It was it edible? It oh. was not. The I pineapples like, fell in. I it love was that disgusting. story, though. Okay. Yeah. That's I you tried cannot to eat it. Cookies. But <laughs> so what did you put? I, I put, put okay, <laughs> laughing. Laughing. Because every one of our memories is like we, we do this thing every night now, it's a ritual. And we go to bed each night, we save memes and reels uh, and before bed we share with each other and all of our memories, uh, whether it's vacation or Christmas morning, has to do with like laughing and uh, they have great laughs. Uh, I love it. They're uh, <laughs> All right, I put down Christmas. Cause okay, yeah, right. okay, so I wrote down a couple, so. Double I wrote down. <laughs> what did you well, put? Well, I didn't know what to choose from. Okay, so I did Christmas morning. Oh. Mm-hmm. Put it up, put it up, put and it up, then, put it up. Okay, hold on, wait. She's like, let me write it down. I'll write it down. Okay, so. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I love okay, it. So I, um, okay, I did Barcelona because I guess like I'm still in my childhood. I don't know. <laughs> Barcelona. Uh, um, birthday cakes. The birthday cake, we did big amazing birthday cakes. The fondant birthday cake, Christmas morning. But I think most of them is from COVID 19 with the TikTok when I made oh, mom and daughter okay. TikToks with you. Oh, oh no. that's fun. Oh, the one that you didn't even put on your sheet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> last two okay we only have like a few more minutes so we're gonna ask two more questions make it quick so number four what is your mo- your mom's most annoying habit or quirk okay you guys you have uh-huh. ten, 10 seconds just write anything just throw something out there <laughs> Jake's like uh <laughs> can I copy off of you bro she's perfect <laughs> <laughs> all right and time okay so Brody you first what do you have what is her most annoying habit? Loud laugh. Loud laugh. Jake, what's yours? She can't pronounce words right. Yeah. <laughs> I call them Whitneyisms. Oh. I have Camisms. Yes. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm playing go. sort of a, on every point in a roundabout yeah. way. Uh-huh. I don't yes. know how it's like not the exact answer, but it's always right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. I think Lola and I have the same exact one, I think. Okay. I put down fidgeting my feet and toes. <laughs> Okay, I did biting her nails whenever we're watching TV. I'll be sitting oh, she's gonna have a story. Her, she'll be like moving her feet and it's really annoying. Or she'll be biting her fingers. <laughs> like her like, fingernails okay. and like she's so loud with it. 
<laughs> okay. All right. We have one more question, and then we're going to let you all run free and uh, go play in the yard and drink some Kool-Aid, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. If your mom could have any superpower, what would it be? Oh, we've talked about this. Yeah. <laughs> Ten seconds. <laughs> da -da -da. <laughs> All right, hurry up, write something. Oh, you guys are, well, you guys can team up. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> We've talked about this one, Lola. Wild. Uh, All right. Okay, <laughs> and time. All right. So, Brody, you first. What do you have? Take pain from others. Oh, Take, I, oh. We just talked about that. Oh. You're so right. Oh. I, I almost put that, but I didn't think you'd remember oh. that. Okay. That's, that's that is you awesome. Guys, you, guys you, are, you guys are deep with your superpowers. Uh huh. Yeah, they're deep. I, <laughs> your superpower to be smart? <laughs> to be smart. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? What do you say? What? <laughs> Just, yeah. Oh my God, Whitney, what do you have? Yeah, I put my superpower would be to freezing freeze time, time because I love this and oh. I don't want you guys to get older. Don't get any older. I want to stop time so stop I can time. keep you forever this age. I love it. Ah, uh, that's a good one. That's a good one. It's not a winner, but it's a good one. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, mine feels now like a really shallow superhero. <laughs> no. Okay. And, okay, Lola, you put yours yeah, up first. Lola, you, put you yours go first because you're cheating. I feel like I put super strength. I put oh, super strength. okay. Super strength. Well, we got, yeah, I put down flying. Ooh, that's, that's kind of <laughs> sort of well, not the same thing, but it's kind of similar. Yes. All right, super you guys. Bad. So who won? Okay. Who won? I think it's about a tie. Yeah. yeah. It's a tie. Thank you for joining us. This segment has been so much fun. <laughs> and until next time, we'll see you guys on the flip side. Mwah.